Why don't we start with the latest news, the idea of crypto regulation, lawmakers meeting with bankers. Is that definitely a tailwind in your mind for the crypto industry, the fact that the big banks and the lawmakers are getting together? Uh, it kind of seems contrary to the idea that Bitcoin is about decentralizing finance. Bitcoin is about decentralizing finance from the infrastructure perspective. Uh, but look, we welcome all builders into cryptocurrency, into blockchain, and some of those builders are going to be our very large existing enterprises and institutions. Uh, and crypto has never been about eliminating regulation, far from it. Uh, and I think what we've been seeing over the last year is with the introduction of, and really the imperative for all institutions to have a digital asset strategy, people are thinking about how do we actually take regulations of the past and move them into something which is appropriate for this next phase of innovation. All right. You're right now at the Solana conference in Abu Dhabi. We often hear about Bitcoin. People seem to use it for payments. Ether is supposed to be a platform that you can build on. What's Solana used for? What's the outlook for Solana in your mind? How do we see it playing out in Wall Street and Main Street? There are two use cases for blockchains. One is the asset use case. The other is the infrastructure use case. Bitcoin is the asset. Solana is the infrastructure. Everyone is now familiar with Bitcoin. That took about 10 years. Uh, now everyone embraces Bitcoin as this self-sovereign digital gold, uh, only 21 million. And that store of value thesis, I think, is now, one, is now well understood. Uh, the other part of blockchain's vision is to build this peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, this programmable infrastructure anyone can use to build applications and build financial applications first and foremost. That is Solana's role. Uh, and Solana, you know, we've learned a lot from those who came before us, uh, but our view has always been, you know, the same way that we love the internet at 56K modems, but it was just better on ethernet and ever and ever better on fiber. That's also the way we see it. So we're here to build the, 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 the fastest, the cheapest, the most liquid financial infrastructure. Uh, and, uh, and where I think this industry is going is you've got Solana, the infrastructure and Bitcoin, the asset. All right. I think a lot of us, we're familiar with the terms, we're familiar with the idea of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ether, and Solana, but how it all really works together sometimes can be confusing. So we had a headline this week, JP Morgan uh, arranges Galaxy Digital's bond issuance on the Solana blockchain. The payment's gonna be in stable coins. Can you just explain to us how the, all these different cryptocurrencies work together? Solana's the platform, but then why are stable coins involved? Why can't you get paid in Solana? So the stable coins are issued, so Solana, they're sold the token, and then there's Solana, the programmable infrastructure, Solana, the financial rails. And so those financial rails allow you to issue a stable coin using this underlying financial infrastructure. Uh, and the coordination of that network uses Sol, the native token. Uh, so there are, you're right, there are multiple kind of aspects of this, but in the case that you're mentioning, which is JP Morgan and Galaxy and Coinbase and Solana, what's happening is that there's a stable coin which is being issued, which has been issued on Solana using Solana's financial infrastructure. And there's also commercial paper from JP Morgan, which is also being tokenized. And the market around that to settle that commercial paper transaction uh, is using uh, is using uh, a tokenized asset, commercial paper, being settled against stable coins, which are also issued on Solana. So when we talk okay. about RWA or tokenize everything, uh, stable coins and commercial paper are two forms of those tokens. Yeah, I mean, that was just an example. I think a lot of us are trying to figure out exactly what are the applications for these different coins, these different platforms. Okay, again, you're at the Solana conference over in Abu Dhabi. Give us your, your forecast for Solana, not only for the end of this year, but for the end of next year as well. Uh, so I think in terms of um, Solana's usage, uh, we are already the most used chain, uh, and that's not even uh, by a little bit. Solana uh, throughout 2025 is more used than the entire rest of the industry combined times two to three. So Solana is already the most adopted blockchain. Uh, and when you think about uh, value creation for blockchains outside of Bitcoin, when you think about the infrastructure blockchains and how they create value, what it is, is like any other tech platform, there's usage, which results in fee revenue, which results in, because you know these networks are user-owned infrastructure, uh, that uh, that fee revenue ends up uh, going back to token holders at the end of the day. So for everything outside of Bitcoin, uh, uh, what really matters uh, is revenue, and revenue comes from usage. And in that sense, even though blockchain can be a little bit confusing for folks, uh, uh, sometimes at the end of the day, it actually comes back to, uh, like many other uh, tech platforms, users means usage, means fees, means value.
And does that also translate to the prediction markets? We're hearing about Coinbase, kind of getting the prediction markets, and also tokenizing, a term that you continue to use. Um, what's your view on that and the idea of tokenizing something that's looking ahead at events that may or may not happen? Seems like it's a departure from some of these other use cases that you're talking about. I think it's an additional use case. Uh, the way I think about it is uh, blockchain is financial infrastructure and it's going to support the full variety of ways that people use money. And the most basic way that people use money is they move it, and we usually call it a payment. Uh, but then on the other end of the spectrum, people save, they invest, uh, and they use different financial products. And prediction markets are a new type of financial product, a new, a new financial primitive or way for people to participate in markets. Uh, and so, uh, so I think that uh, the prediction market, you can both participate in it. You can also take your position. You can, yes, even tokenize that. And you could potentially use the tokenization of that uh, of that market position and even use that as onward collateral. And so this is where you get into some really zany things that you can really only do on blockchain, because at the very at the very sort of basic level, uh, when you take all money and make it all into uh, a common data structure, then you can have you can like kind of build these money Legos, uh, which is what we're doing in DeFi. Uh, where you can take a position and you can use that as collateral itself in order to use in additional markets. And that's where, uh, that's where uh, a lot of the financial innovation in crypto is coming from.